adventuring of Chicory, a colourful tale. Plus some top tips on being a racing ace in Gran Turismo 7. Let's go! Hello and welcome to GGSP. I'm Rad. And I'm Jem. Uh, you double in some drawing and art stuff, don't you, Jem? Oh, I've been known to splash some digital paint around. Do you want to see? Oh, yeah. Here's a cup of boba. Almost too cute to drink. Oh, this is me with my ooblet friends. And uh, this is my best boy, Kirby, practising self-care. They're not perfect, but art doesn't need to be. I think I like the ooblets one the best. So I bet you have some hot takes on this week's game, Chicory. Well, it is an arty one. I do like the style. And... Hello, Jem. Hello, Rad. Hi, Hi Darren. Funny you should be talking about art this week. I've just finished an online course in advanced paint. I call this one Eradication of Noob. <gasps> what do you think? Uh... When you said paint, I didn't think you actually meant Microsoft Paint. It, it's nice. Ah, uh, it's wonderful, Darren. Gotta keep at it. Hone that artistic eye. Uh, you'll be in the National Gallery in no time. Oh, you really think so? <laughs> On with the show, then. Wise to keep him happy. All right, time for some gaming headlines now with Jax at the Scoop Desk. Good morning, Jax. Good morning. We still don't have a name for you. That's OK. The DGS peeps at home have been busy sending in their suggestions. I am OK to wait until we find the right one. If you're happy to wait. But in the meantime, let's get into the weekly gaming news. Of course. All righty, then. Our first story is all about screen burn-in. Screen burn-in is a problem that can occur when electronic screens are left on for too long. Part of the screen is no longer able to hit the same level of brightness as before, so you're left with permanent damage. In fact, it was such a scary problem that people thought the new OLED Switch model would be affected by screen burn-in, leaving ghostly images in still areas like health bars or menus. Well, thanks to a streamer, we now know it's not so likely to happen. They kept their OLED Switch running on a single image for 150 days straight to test the theory, and after all that time, only noticed a small amount of damage on their display. So, unless you're sitting there just staring at one photo for weeks on end, you're unlikely to run into any bothersome burn-in related issues. That is very good to know. As someone with a screen of their own, that sounds quite scary. If you keep making a face like that, it's gonna get stuck. Oh, Jax, that's just a myth. Oh, oh dear. I told you, I told you. But moving on, a new Nintendo theme park is opening in Hollywood. Super Nintendo World, the real-life Mario theme park that opened last year in Japan, is opening at another location at Universal Studios in Hollywood, California. There's not too much info on it yet, except for the announcement of a groundbreaking new ride. I wonder what that means. According to my database of groundbreaking Nintendo characters, it will most likely be a giant drill based on the Pokemon Diglett. I'm not sure if us humans would enjoy that in a theme park, but it will have themed restaurants from the Mushroom Kingdom and, of course, places to buy hats and overalls if you want to dress like a super-powered plumber. The park extension is set to open in 2023. Now, speaking of huge simulated locations, it was only a matter of time before someone recreated a whole city. Developers Simteract have used real-world data to recreate the city of Barcelona in Spain at a one-to-one -one scale in their game Urban Venture. To explore the city, you play as a taxi driver, going past real-life landmarks and through complex traffic. If it's realistic enough, maybe I could go visit my relatives. How cool would that be? Hey, are you listening? I, I said, how cool would that be? Oh, sorry, Jax. Yes, very cool. Almost as cool as these tunes. Almost. The video game company Square Enix has launched a YouTube channel called Square Enix Music, filled with over 5,000 songs from their games for listeners to enjoy. Everything from Chrono Trigger to Kingdom Hearts to Secret of Mana and more. They've even made some more relaxing beats to study to. Sounds like music to my ears. If I had ears. Music to my uh, audio input devices. I get what you meant. But that's all the news we've got for you this week. Oh, don't forget to help name our friend here. You can go to our website to send in your suggestions here while you've still got time. Until next time, back to the studio.
adventure puzzler Chicory, A Colourful Tale was originally released back in 2021. And while we didn't get a chance to review it then, it recently scored some nominations for the British Academy of Film and Television Arts, or BAFTA, Game Awards. So we figured it was time to give it a look. Our colourful tale begins as we learn of the legendary Chicory, the latest in a long line of so-called wielders. Wielders are the artists responsible for bringing colour to the quaint colouring book world of Picnic Province. Being in charge of restoring colour to places like luncheon, brekkie and tea time meadows might sound like a deliciously delightful walk in the park. But trying to please the population of Picnic Province with their particular tastes and opinions is no easy feat. Some are hung up on the good old days of Wilder's past. Some have very precise artistic visions and will let you know exactly how they feel about your work. And it soon becomes clear that you need to get to the bottom of a mysterious corruption that's taken root in the province all while trying to figure out just what's going on with Chicory and how to help her through a tough time. Ah, heavy is the hand that wields the magic paintbrush. Uh, something like that. As you explore different regions of the map, you can add colour to each screen using the brush. Along the way, you'll unlock new abilities and brush types, like glow-in-the-dark paint to illuminate dark caves, the ability to move through your paint, Splatoon style, and the ability to swim through painted waterways. These skills help you explore and interact with the world, solve puzzles, or just offer up new decorating options. Oh, the way you use these painting abilities is such a cool and clever little game mechanic, isn't it? Some flowers grow big when painted, allowing you to just bounce across them. Some shrink when painted, so you can pass or walk through them. And bug-like rock creatures scurry around cleaning up paint, allowing you to use them to access platforms or move things around. It's all super charming. Although, at times I found some of the mild platforming elements weren't the smoothest sometimes making me wonder if I'd got the puzzle right. Speaking of puzzles, though, you are quite the puzzle connoisseur. What did you think of these ones? I thought they were really nicely balanced. There's just enough head scratching that you feel satisfied once you figure it out. There are a few challenging ones in the mix for sure, but you can always call home from one of the phone booths scattered across the map to get some hints and moral support from your parents. I was definitely calling home a lot, but I like that you can customise the amount of detail you get in your hint. Along with the core puzzling though, there are also a series of boss fights. These sort of bullet hell style battles with rattling dramatic anthems reminded me a bit of Undertale. And they can be pretty intense. Yeah, I actually didn't love those parts. I found them a bit abstract and ended up just squiggling about the place most of the time, which did seem to do the trick eventually. Ah, but I just wanted to get back to proper puzzling. I played on PC with a mouse and keyboard, but I imagine these could be trickier to manage with a controller. And I must admit, some were a little on the scary side. These encounters are the only real combat sections of the game, though, and can actually be skipped in the options menu if you prefer to avoid them. I thought they added a bit of action into the mix, but let's talk story. We all know I'm a story devotee through and through, and the one here is surprisingly deep. The characters, especially Chicory, struggle with self-doubt, the burden of responsibility, and the challenges of creativity as a pursuit. We explore their feelings of sadness and frustration and the conflicting emotions that come with living up to the legacy of those that came before. In fact, some of these themes might be better absorbed by older GGS peeps or with the guidance of grown-ups. Aside from the main story, though, there is heaps to keep you busy around Picnic. There's side quests and activities to complete for some of the gastronomically named townsfolk or art classes at the Art Academy. And there are collectibles like litter, which you can trade for plants and other items, clothing like hats and outfits, and lost kitties, referred to as kids, to shake out of hiding. 
Plus, there's a co-op mode, just in case you want to splash some paint with a pal. I will collect all those kitties. I do not care how long it takes. The overall, though, it was indeed the colourful tale of chicory, and in my case, cheese, that had me really loving this game. Their journey is all about the courage it takes to step up, paint your own path and try your best, even if you're not sure you can do it, and to never be afraid to ask for help. It tells this story in such a beautiful and engaging way that got me right in the heartstrings. So I'm giving it four and a half out of five rubber chickens. There is a lot to love in this game. The artful puzzling is so inventive and satisfying. So I'm giving Chicory a colourful tail four and a half out of five rubber chickens. Now, Jem, it's time to go to the Oscars Beat House! Don't just sit there, let's get to it. With tons of questions, we must get through it. Ooh, who's our first GGSP? Well, it is a video question from Navrin. Hi, GGSP. I'm Navrin. I have two questions for you. One, have you played Untitled Goose Game? And if you have, what's your favourite thing in it? Two, will Mojang add green axolotls to Minecraft? Darren, do these. <coughs> We're in the money. Finding Nemo. Bum, 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 bum. Data dump. Oh. Quack a doodle doo. for your fantastic video question there, Navarin. And yes, we have played Untitled Goose Game and we loved it. I particularly enjoyed the puzzle elements of the game, trying to stealthily enter the garden and have a picnic or finding out a way to get on the telly. <laughs> there was nothing more satisfying than hearing that pencil cross off my to-do list, whereas I was an absolute goose. <laughs> I loved honking at absolutely everything and mucking around in the game. I would even complete tasks without even realising it. Not to mention how gorgeous the game looks, complemented with its delightful musical score. <gasps> so good. Oh, if you liked that gem, check this out. Whoa, how are you doing that? I need to learn, but after. Now let's move on to Navarin's next question about the mythical green axolotl in Minecraft. During a Minecraft live stream a few years back, they did reveal a snippet of the green axolotls. But unfortunately, they didn't make their way into the latest version of the game. So far, axolotls can be found in other cute colours like cyan and gold, but with Mo Yang continuously keeping us entertained with tons of cool updates, I don't think it'll be too long until a green axolotl is on its way. And that is my opinion. Do not noob cut me if it doesn't happen. Oh, we'll see, Jem. Uh, but it is best to spell out N-O-O-B so that Darren doesn't hear us. Uh, but let's move on now to this wonderful video question from Emma. Hi, GDSP! I'm Emma and I'm 10 years old. My question for you today is, do you have any marine themed games? Because I love the underwater life. Bye! Thanks, Emma. We know a bunch of marine-themed games that you can dive into. Of course, we have the fan-favourite Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero, Swim with the Fish and Mammals in Abzu, the educational diving game Beyond Blue, Play as an aquatic microorganism in Flow, or test your brain in a colourful puzzler in Coral. A fun fact, Coral was made entirely by one person. Oh, where are we? I've got a few suggestions here as well. They are a little bit different. There's SpongeBob SquarePants, Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, it is technically underwater. Super Mario Odyssey has a few worlds where you can swim and even become a fish. Plus, there are some levels in other Mario and Crash Bandicoot games that have that underwater experience within them. All right, let's move on to our last video question from GGSP Antonio. GGSP, I have two questions for you. One, which micro SD card is better for game storage on the Switch? And two, I'm trying to defeat the Ice Golem boss in Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, so I was wondering if I could have some tips. Thanks, bye. Whoa, tricky tech question from you there, Antonio. Uh, let's ask Darren if he knows. He won't forgive us if we don't. 
Hello, Darren speaking. Uh, hi, Darren. GGS Peep Antonio is asking what micro SD cards are good for game storage on the Switch, and I thought, you're just the robot to ask. Oh, affirmative. According to the Nintendo Support website, any micro SD up to 2 gigabytes and micro SD HC cards between 4 and 32 gigabytes are supported. A new type of card called the Micro SD XC, which stands for Extended Capacity, can hold more data, but they are most likely to be more expensive. Always best to check with your gaming guardian or grown up if you're unsure. Okay, let's say we don't have access to a micro SD card. What can we do? Oh, uh, yeah, what happens to our game saves? Ah, well, you can also archive your games on the Nintendo Switch. Archiving a game will only delete the game data, which is the thing that takes up most of the space on your console, but leaves your game saves. Simply select the game you want to archive, then go to Data Management, then Archive Software. So, in the future, all you have to do is download the game again, and you won't have to start over. Oh, so if you don't have access to additional storage, archiving is a great way to manage with the Switch's limited internal storage. Affirmative. Oh, that's so good to know. Thanks, Darren. Uh, micro S. See ya later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> OK, so Antonio also asked if we could give him some tips on how to defeat the Ice Golem boss in Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Oh, Jem, I got this. He's going up against a tough opponent called the Icicle Golem boss. Well, by all means, take it away, Rad. So in Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, the Icicle Golem boss certainly ramps up the difficulty quite a bit. The Icicle Golem is a buckler type, which are large enemies that carry shields and blast guns. Their shields protect them from front attacks, which means we will need to focus on flanking them, which is basically attacking from the unprotected sides and back. Icicle Golem has a powerful melee attack and a long-range rocket attack that doesn't do as much damage, but it will inflict freeze, which can stop you from using your special abilities. And that isn't what we want at all. There are also two members you'll want on your team, Princess Peach and Rabbit Peach, who both have useful heal abilities. If you're frozen, Peach's team jump will remove the effects and also heal your team within range. Plus, her protection skill can increase the defense of team members and redirect any damage towards her. But don't worry, she has got a lot of health. You will see in the next phases, Icicle Golem no longer has a shield to protect him, but he will summon smashes or a support. If you find yourself overwhelmed by his sidekicks, take care of them first so you have room to breathe. The support will usually stay near the boss, so throw your projectiles or use special skills to quickly get rid of them. Move around the enemies to attack, take cover when you can, and stay away from the center. Before you know it, that icicle golem will melt under pressure. Uh, I see what you did there. Well, now I know who to call when Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope comes out. Oh, please do call me. I can't wait. But I hope that helps you, Antonio. OK, well, looks like that is all the time we have for Ask SP this week. If you have a curious question for us, then go here to send it in. And remember that all videos selected for the show will receive a loot drop with tons of GGSP-related goodies. So can you show me that piano thing again, Rad? Oh, I can show you, but I can't tell you how it's done. Ooh. What does this button do? Have you ever wanted to drift on the Tokyo Expressway, turn your parents' used car into a souped-up Supra, or even learn how to take the perfect corner? Well, 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 buckle up as I take you through my top tips on how to race like an ace in Gran Turismo 7. Number one, gotta go fast. Going fast in Gran Turismo 7 isn't as simple as holding down the go button. This is a serious racing sim, so you'll need to prep your vehicles to handle top speeds or risk burning out. But lucky for you, we have the secret sauce. Close ratio transmission. Thanks. Transmission is one of the most important factors to speed. It's what moves power from your engine to your wheels. Picking this upgrade gives you more control at higher gears and can improve top speed. Without it, if you go too fast, you'll risk losing control, even in a straight line. Number two, 
Customize your driver. One of the easiest ways to make your mark as a superstar on the track is to dress the part. Once you collect enough cars from the cafe, you'll unlock the car wash. It's here that you can edit the default driving suit and wash your car. You could go full pink or open up the livery editor and add as many stickers as your heart desires. Here's me dressed as Avatar, the last airbender. Or how about the Stig? Or the Rinsler from Tron? Number three, unlock more tournaments. Just like in real life, in order to drive in GT7, you need to get your license. Ha ha, good joke, Jax. I don't really have to take a driving test in this game, do I? Yes, yes you do. Gran Turismo does not mess around, and mastering the basics is the easiest way to unlock your full potential out on that speedway. So, head to the driving school and finish up those practice corners. It might take you multiple goes to even pass. It certainly took me plenty of tries to master those high speed ones in particular. But once you prove yourself, you'll be handsomely rewarded with the Tokyo Expressway Championship and can get racing on that next level of speed and skill. Number four, taking the perfect corner. In order for you to extemporize your vehicle and achieve the optimum turning trajectory, one must consider the apex of the turn as well as the braking point. These pillars of speed and geometry are what dictate how quickly you can go from slowing down to placing power back on the throttle. To find the geometric apex is easy Boring enough to calculate. Alert. Simply find the central point on the upward swing of a parabola and adjust it. Number five, have fun. When it's all said and done, Gran Turismo 7 is a fantastic racing sim with some of the most detailed and accurate car models ever made. In fact, GT cars are tuned so realistically, they actually reflect how these beasts handle in real life, each with their own personality and characteristics. My tip would be to try out as many cars as you can. Buying used cars is a great way to try out different models you never would have dreamed of. Go see if a street sedan drives differently to a sports hatchback. Collect some classic Japanese drift cars. The more you try out, the more racetracks and rewards you unlock. And who knows, you might find your dream car model. The one you spend hours tuning and practicing corners in. Or the one that takes you to the top of that coveted racing podium. Until then, I'll see you on the tarmac. We're nearly at the end of the show, but there's something rather exciting we wanted to announce, and it is called The Spawn Squad. This is a brand new show all about you, young gamers that want to show off their gaming skills and knowledge. That's right. Maybe you've built an amazing world in Minecraft or are an ace at Super Smash Bros. Or maybe you've got your own tips and tricks to share for your favourite game. Whatever it is, we want you to come in here to the GGSP Den of Gaming and show it off to us. You can find out more on how to apply by going to our website here and look for the Spawn Squad tile. This is going to be so amazing, and so is next week's show. We've got a review of the Zelda-like adventure game, Tunic. Until then, be nice, have fun, and keep gaming. Right out. Jam out.